Hello, this is Severia Gimenezzo coming at you today with a watercolor project for your camp activity. Today we're going to be doing an ode to summer, saying a slow goodbye for the next couple of weeks to summer before school starts. We are going to be doing some popsicle art with watercolors. Uh, you will be getting a watercolor set like this in a package. Which will be coming with this brush. And you also will be getting this brush, which is a little larger, to work with bigger areas. So those are the things you will be getting in addition to the watercolor paper, which is um, seamed in the middle, so you can fold it in half. You can cut it in half for doing two small art projects or leave it as one as a card and a nice envelope that you can put that into and possibly give it to someone as a gift. Cards make good gifts too. They're, you don't have to buy a present. A card is a very thoughtful thing to give. And coming to the end of the summer, maybe you want to say thank you to someone you've spent um, a special event with or celebration with over the summer. That'd be very nice. So I firstly want to show you uh, some of the techniques in doing these. Um, there are some washes and some salt maybe you might have around the house from your kitchen. Some paper towel you'll be needing to flat your brushes or actually even tear off and make like these little um, wipes that you can pick up extra paint to make the highlights and such. So let's get started. You're going to get your brush. I'm going to start with the, the larger one. It'll look easier to work with. The smaller one you can save for details. It's always best to wet your watercolor uh, set. Just put a, a little drop of paint in each one. If the color mixes, just rinse that off. And do that so it activates the pigment. The cakes are hard or the pans of watercolors are hard. So this just starts it off, so it starts to soften up, making it a little bit more easy to get your paints um, moving around and used. If it gets a little bit stained with another color, you can, again, paper towel is so useful on watercolor painting. Like I got some blue in the white, just dab it up and it's clean. So don't worry about that. Um, with your brush, Careful not to like scrub it at the bottom of your water uh, container. It'll ruin the bristles. Just give it a, a swirl, like the figure eight is a nice little swirl, it gets the movement of the water, get you through the bristles and cleaning. And just carefully just swipe up the top edge of your water container. And that gets most of the water off. If you don't want a lot, then before you touch it to your paper, then you just carefully dab it, don't squish it down. Again, it'll damage it, the bristles. You want your brush to last as long as possible. So I'm going to show you firstly a wash. You just get your paintbrush nice and soaking wet where it actually has some water um, dripping from it. And this is just random practice that you can do on a separate piece of paper. This is not the final project. Just showing you a little bit of technique. You actually start to draw. You can draw a shape. Uh, I'll draw a little one here with my water just to show you. And then you pick a color, any color, popsicles are all sorts of colors. I'm gonna get this pretty pink one. And you want to make sure you have the color you want and the consistency you want on the top lid of your container. You can use as your palette. And then you just go in and you drop the color in and you'll see that the color will burst into the area that is already wet. It just flows. And then if you want it to carry on, then you can just brush it along. It almost looks like a, a toast shape. All right. So say it's like, oh, I filled it in and maybe I wanted to lighten it up. I have like a creamsicle effect over here. And what one can do for the creamsicle effect right here, you can either go back with your brush and wipe out areas, make it look like a swirl of flavors going through. 
and you just dab your brush in the water, put it on paper towel, it dries up your brush so it makes it thirsty for what's on your paper. So as you can see, you get some highlight kind of thing. If you want to really lighten things up, you get the paper towel and you dab through. Say I want a highlight, I can just dab that around and make my highlight down the side. All right. So if I want darker, just go back and reload my brush. Go over that edge. And the more layers you put, all right, so just load up and you just put a little bit more paint on there. Maybe you want to put some extra deeper colors. Again, load. All right, so now I'm just going to dab those edges. So it's more of a free flow edge on there. Again, dabbing into the water or dipping into the water and then dabbing on the paper towel and then softening up those edges. Okay. So just a lot of dipping and a lot of dabbing. You can make different effects. Okay, like that. And again, the highlights, you can just go back and dab them right out. If you want to show like a frosted effect, say you, your ice cream or popsicles been in the, in the freezer a little too long, or how just the, the water content of the popsicle freezes up in little ice, ice bursts. If you have that salt that's in your kitchen, the more wet the surface is, the better. You get a pinch of salt and you just put it on there. And as you can see, the salt starts soaking up the water along with the pigment. You let it set and leave it till it dries. We'll check on to that surface later. When it's dry, we'll wipe it off. And then you'll see like little white speckles and it'll resemble the little icy um, points or little crystals that are on your popsicle. Uh, I think, uh, Let's do something like a, a, a blended wash there of two different colors. So again, I'll pick a color. Let's go with green. Let's see if I have. So say you have the color green here. Wash your brush out. The trick with the watercolor is really just washing your brush out all the time, frequently, between colors, to lighten up colors. Um, it, it makes a difference to, to gradiate them or change their tint. And tint, I'm saying, because we don't typically use white. I do have, there is a white in here, and we can practice with that a little bit. We'll get a little bit of white and see what that does to the color here. And as you see, it really doesn't do too much. So that's why we use the water basically, the rinse and dab to continue lightening things up. Let's go make this maybe what, a lime and tangerine flavored popsicle. So I have my green, I'm gonna get my orange and I'm just gonna drop it down on the bottom here. I'm going to rinse it out because I want it to just gently flow into the green and just lift up. If you mix them, green and orange are on different sides of the color wheel, you'll get a really not so nice brown. So we don't want to be doing that. So just to show you, I want the green darker. Dip again in the green. The paper's still wet and it'll flow down. I definitely want my orange a little brighter. Again, dip and dab. Start that on that lower edge. 
and have it flow up. And then just have the two sort of meet a diagonal man. And you see it just turn a little brown. There. If you don't like that color, it's like, I'm not sure about that. You can do it. You can tap, dab it out. Dip. We do. So that's how you get the two colors, and then you can just soften up the edge. All right, so those are the different things you can do. You can check on our salt here. It's drying up, it's not quite there. Say you wanna go back and do a little highlighting. It's like, oh, it's all pretty much dry. You can re-wet the area in the shape that you want highlighted and you see that it's still picking up. And if I wanna make it a brighter white, again, because what, the popsicle is shiny, right? It's from a wet surface, it's starting to melt with the heat. So it has a nice glisten to it that will pick up highlights. So there again, that's the way you can highlight. All right, the popsicle stick, then get a little bit of brown. Just water draw that popsicle stick, fill it in. We'll let it dry just a little bit. I'll go back and put a little shadow under it later. But basically, that is the stick. As you see here, so we did the ones where it's a creamsicle, maybe a little bit of swirls, a little bit of uh, orange, orange and cream. Um, here, the different colors that blend in. I want to make this a little deeper. Okay, our uh, lime and tangerine. All right. And our salt is still, still a little uh, wet. We want it dry. It won't work. You won't see the effect if it's uh, dry enough. So here you see the highlights like I've made, like I've shown you to go back to. Here, like indentations, sometimes they have indentations, sometimes I uh, have a, a double popsicle and you have the, the middle parts thinner because it's spreading between the two sides. That's where you do the highlight. Here are the indentation. Let's go back on this one. Actually, yeah, this one's uh, dry. Let's do some indentation. I'm going to just make a little bit of a different color, add a little bit of the purple with my pink, just so you can see it. And again, the wash is just a layering of colors, especially when one layer is dry, and then you get a, uh, a layer you put on wet. You can draw in, I'll just draw in shapes with my paintbrush, draw in with my paintbrush. So you would just go in and make those in. My paper is bubbling a little bit. You will see that too, it's waving. It's already too much water content for the paper to hold. So that's why it happens, it just sucks up the water. Fills up like a sponge. You ever see those sponges that you put in a bathtub and they become these little creatures? Well, that's your paper sort of becomes its own little um, creature of its own when it gets too much water on it. So again, if I wanted to make the indentations though, because here it's all one color, I can go back and put a little highlight down the edge and on the top. Okay, and you start getting like the shape. So there's just a few techniques that um, you can practice on your extra sheet of paper that you get. You can see the grains of the salt doing their thing. Let's get back to the popsicle stick just to add a little bit of dimension to it. 
it's just not a little flat surface. A little extra brown. Again, this is like a wash because you're going over one dry layer with a wet layer. And you just put a little bit on the edge to show there's like a little shadow where the popsicle is sitting on. And then you can put a little shadow edge on the edge too of length, just to give it a little dimension. Check the salt. Okay. There we go. I'm just rubbing it off with a dry finger. Make sure your finger's not wet because it'll just dissolve and smear it all out. So you can see that now. I rubbed it away. You can see the little salt crystals moving away. And look at all the like, little effects. Now it looks like it looks like it's been frosted or that little like um, little ice crystals that form on the edge of your um, popsicle. All right. So those are just a little few, uh, few little things that you can practice with. And you can see the shadow on the popsicle stick. You can go back and if you want to get really artsy, do like wood grain because they're little wood um, handles or sticks. So again, here are the various ones, a single popsicle, one that's sort of squared, um, rounded off rectangle, a little bit more. Um, pointed more toward the end and rounded, more rectangle with uh, little indentations and double sides. Here's an actual double-sided popsicle with the two sticks. So for your card, all you need to do is pick what you want, which one, or maybe you want several. Maybe you want your card to have um, a few across it or vertic vertically or horizontally laid, or maybe turn your card and make a big one, whichever way you want to do it. So let's pick one. For a final one, I, I liked my um, red, white, and blue, sort of taking off that summer firecracker popsicle that are so uh, common. So I'm gonna lay mine, I just fold it in half, I'm gonna, just so I really see that split as far as the card. I'm gonna, oh, it's nice to have two uh, containers of water, so you don't have to get up and change the water as often, or swish it in one first and then the other, and you really make sure your brush is clean of the prior color used. Again, I'm going to water draw this. So I'm um, gonna just pick a spot. And I just do it just so I, I know approximately where I, I'm putting mine. Sometimes it's a little hard to see. It's easier if you have a different uh, lighting where you can sort of angle the paper and see the water glistening on the surface. You can always correct the shape once the watercolor pigment is on the surface. So, and if you want, you can always sketch it out first lightly on your paper if you don't want to do it just by, by eye. All right, I'm going to get some red. Again, swish it there. Do it on my palette so I know I have the color and consistency I want. So I can make it stronger per se in, in pigment and be like a stronger, deeper red versus one that fades out in the water. So I'm just gonna start on the top and you're gonna see it's just gonna burst. Wherever there is water on your paper, the color will just burst and travel. It won't go beyond that wet edge. So that, that's interesting. So wherever that wet it edges or wherever the wet tip of your brush is, that is as far as watercolor will go. So which is a fun um, thing to play around with. So I'm just gonna carry my color down about midway. I'm gonna leave it there for a minute. And I'm gonna work with my blue from bottom up. Leave that sort of lower center area white for the red, white, and blue. Again, that white really won't really help us um, create a white. So wherever you want white on your painting, always leave white first. There are different ways to do it, but that's, uh, that would be another lesson. So let's do a blue. This is not quite, so when you run out of space on your palette, just uh, take a little bit of water and wipe it clean. 
like the clean. I'm just going to get rid of these colors. If you were to use these colors, say like this dry, and you want to use that purple again, you don't need to wipe that away. You don't have to clean your palette. If it's a color that you would want to use again, all you need to do is touch your wet brush to it. It reactivates and you can keep using it. That's the only reason you only clean um, the palette is if you want to start your colors off. So, so I have my blue. That's not the blue that I want, all right? For red, white, and blue, I want a little bit darker. It's close, but I want to make it a little darker. So here we're gonna do just a little color mixing. A little light blue, it's a little bit darker blue. And don't worry about the colors mixing again, like I showed you earlier. If another color gets into it, if that surface is um, wet in your little uh, paint set, you can then get a paper towel and just dab it off. I just want to go a little. I like that color. So you can do your color mixing on your palette. And you can always turn your paper around. I'm gonna do it this way. It'll be easier for me to see my bottom edge with the glisten of the water on the paper. So I'm gonna round it off a little bit and then just drag it up. You can see that effect starting out, it's starting to look like a popsicle. And what I'm going to do, because the white, there's no edge to it, I'm just going to carefully, with it cleaned off again, dabbing and swirling, clean off the brush so it's clean. Making sure you have a point. You can always do this with your brush, get a point to it. And I'm going to just carefully edge that blue line, almost like a ghost line. Again, dab, dip and dab. Get that fine point as close as you can and just bring that up so you have an ever so fine ghost edge turn around and as you can see my popsicle is a little lopsided so again you can always rework the edge And then soften up that edge so it works with the rest. Okay. I'm just going to wait a little bit, let it dry a little bit. You can always take a blow dryer, a hair dryer, to your watercolor project to dry it. But the thing is, if it's too wet of a surface with water content and you have the blow dryer too high of a pressure, it can end up spraying your water on your surface all over the place and really mess it up. So it's better to have it like slightly damp and then maybe at a lower temperature, uh, lower um, uh, blowing speed. I'm just gonna soften this up edge a little bit. I'm going to carry the blue up a little bit here. Say it's a little bit drier. I'm going to make that red more intense. Again, a little bit more pigment on the brush. And you can practice and play with this. Again, the popsicle um, aspect, if you look them up on the internet, there are so many colors and shapes and um, it's just really amazing. I never really thought about it too much, um, except for myself looking into it for this project. It's like, it's actually like a little art world of its own, seeing all the different uh, colors and whatnot that are in place and shapes, and flavors, my goodness, awesome flavors. And a very nice memory of uh, summertime thinking back, especially growing up. I remember that was our summertime pulling off, sitting under a shady tree and eating a uh, popsicle was the best thing you could do. All right, this edge is a little bit dry now. I, you don't want to put wet with wet edges together because they will bleed into each other and that's not something that will 
look very pleasant. So I'm just going to get that. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in my brown. Maybe a little too much yellow, I'll lighten it up again. Get the color that I want for the popsicle stick. Again, making sure that bottom edge isn't wet. Hopefully mine's a little damp. I might be taking a chance here. Actually, maybe I'll just go below it and do that edge later for the shadow. So just make yourself a shape, fill it in. Make sure your brush is nice and wet so you don't get too many uh, lines. Dry lines, otherwise it'll be a dry painting. So as you can see, it's like turning out to be a nice popsicle stick. We want to go back and do some of these highlights that so it makes it look like it's icy. So one of two ways, again, clean brush, dip and dab. I make your brush pretty dry so it's thirsty for the water, for whatever moisture is on there. And you just carefully in the shape that you want your highlight, go back and your brush will carry the pigment off. I'm not sure if I want that there, probably not. It's going to the white, there, don't go back up. Want it a little brighter highlight, again, dab off your brush so it's cleaner again, make it brighter. Or, like I said, if you have a paper towel that you twist up, you can go, I'm gonna do the other one on this side so you can see the, the difference. Actually, it's sort of dab, dab, dab along. This side might be a little too dry yet. So I want to dip it, wet it, and then once it's wet, then it should like really wet. And that's how you get your highlights. Maybe put one um, a little bit on top here as a rounded surface. Extra one over here. Again, rinse your brush. Create some of these rounded corners here. Again, if you want to do it with a paper towel, get a clean corner. Now, the red, make a little bit more for your blue, and then you Draw it out and you get um, a nicer, more. I just dipped it in the water too. Let's see what that does. Oh, and I dripped there. All you have to do is get dry paper towel, clean up. So, as you see, it's uh, you get different highlights. Maybe I'll just do some random ones like that. Let's get that shadow on that popsicle stick, just underneath where the popsicle is hovering right over the stick. Nice little edge right there. Like a straight line, so it sure mimics the straight edge of the popsicle above. And maybe a little edge on the side, like I showed earlier. And then we're just gonna carry this over shadow effect. And if the color goes the opposite way of what you want it to do, because I have too much water on my brush, I'm just to reload and bring the color back this way. Go to the other edge, I'll give you that little bit edge there too. Has my firecracker popsicle. Like I said, you could do other effects in the wood if you want. So you can pick whatever you want. Maybe you say, like, you know, uh, ode to summer, sweet, and sweet times, and you have yourself a nice little card to give to someone. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming um, and joining us here at the Anton Art Center. I hope you guys had a good summer, and I wish you the best for your school year. Take care. Thank you.